So hello and welcome everybody to another um, Image Builder SIG at OpenShift Commons. I'm Diane Mueller and I'm really pleased here today to have Adam Miller and Matthew Miller, not brothers, but um, huge Fedora folks, um, here to explain uh, a new initiative at Fedora called the Fedora Docker Layered Image Builder Build Service um, and uh, to talk a little bit about the Fedora Cloud. So I'm going to let the two of them take it away. What I'd like to ask is that if you have questions, ask them in the chat. Um, let Adam and Matthew get through this presentation and the talk, um, and then we can have a conversation afterwards. Since we're recording this for posterity, um, it will be posted up um, rather quickly on um, our YouTube channel, and you can find more information at the um, OpenShift Commons um, site for SIGs, commons.openshift.org, SIG, and you'll look for interests in the menu and you can pick whatever you're interested in, whether it's image builders, operations, education, and um, perhaps propose another SIG. So without further ado, I'm going to let um, Adam take it away and um, start us off this morning. Thanks, Dan. Hi, uh, I'm Adam Miller. Um, I'm part of the Fedora community, uh, part of the Fedora engineering team at Red Hat, and uh, I work primarily in release engineering and cloud things. And one of the uh, kind of areas where that intersects uh, ends up being uh, the Docker layered image build service. Um, so we're going to kind of go through um, what Fedora Cloud is, um, what the layered image build service is, and then we'll do a bit of a demo uh, to kind of show off how that, how that uh, goes in. There'll be a little bit of background information as we go, um, just because I don't want to assume that everybody who is watching this later or participating today is intimately familiar with how Fedora contributors uh, actually contribute code and content. So uh, for starters, what is Fedora Cloud? So uh, once upon a time, Fedora as a distribution kind of had one thing. Uh, we had one uh, deliverable that we, we created, a single ISO installer. Uh, it was a big, it just giant honking DVD that had all kinds of configurable options and those kind of things. And uh, as part of, um, so actually Matt Miller, who is on the call, um, uh, who is the Fedora project leader uh, that I probably Hello. should have, <clears throat> probably should have uh, taken a moment to introduce. Uh, but um, so let's do that now. Matt, do you want to you want to talk about uh, all the things that you do in Fedora space? Oh man, um, I, I don't even know what I, all the things I do are. But yeah, I am the project leader, and I guess the main thing I do is try and. Um, build community consensus around what we're doing and where we're going, and then try and keep everybody on the same page about all of that. Um, so this was definitely one of the things that came up as additions idea, um, where I tried to, to help shepherd the project into uh, a next, the next generation of where we want to be for, for Fedora for the future. Right, so that's kind of what brings us uh, to this, is there was an initiative to create three additions. There's workstation, server, and cloud. And uh, Fedora Cloud is one of the additions, and it targets cloud infrastructures. And that's a little bit vague uh, on purpose because there are multiple kinds of cloud infrastructures. There's infra infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, uh, and then software as a service. We generally uh, hang out <clears throat> and try to deliver solutions in the former two, uh, not necessarily the, the latter. but uh, there are things that uh, Fedora Cloud um, does provide information for and a platform for, that, you know, similar like own cloud or next cloud and uh, those kinds of things. So <clears throat> what we produce is an addition and it's a image that can be run in different environments as well as the, the basis for the platform to actually spin up clouds. <clears throat> and uh, the cloud working group is a subset of the Fedora community uh, that works to deliver the cloud technologies and those kinds of things. And there are two relative links. One is actually where to get the cloud content, um, and that will include, you know, being able to spin it up on um, infrastructure service environments like Amazon, as well as download images to import into if you have an on-premise, those kinds of things. And then the uh, Fedora project or wiki page you see there is actually about the cloud working group. Uh, what we do when we meet uh, things that we're current initiatives we're working on and uh, and kind of what we're doing in that realm. So one of the the pretty hot topics in in the world of of um, cloud right now is containers. And uh, kind of the front runner in, in, in that world is probably almost 
unanimously going to be Docker. So <clears throat> one of the things that we're focusing on right now and where release engineering and uh, cloud kind of intersect is delivering a platform upon which Fedora contributors can build and maintain Docker images in a reproducible and auditable fashion. And what that means is if you provide the same set of inputs, we should be able to uh, prove that we have the same set of outputs. And this, for various reasons in release engineering, is very desirable. And it's something that we are working to do. And the solution's in place, and I'll kind of go through it in a demo. Um, <clears throat> but one of the main goals that we had was to keep the process very similar to how Fedora contributors today uh, create and maintain RPMs. Um, in the history of the Fedora project, the primary uh, build artifact that came out of our build system was RPMs. Uh, we didn't have anything else. And as we move forward, we're trying to make the build system and our processes more um, more modular in nature, more flexible uh, to allow us to deliver new things in the future. So today we're working on Docker. Um, you know, next up we're probably going to be working on um, other container technologies as well as new application uh, technologies such as Flatpak. Uh, for those familiar with that project, um, so we just kind of want to move into the world. And, and this also, again, kind of goes back to the Fedora.next initiative uh, that talks about trying to make. Uh, components of the operating system um, more flexible and allowing certain components to exist in different life cycles and those kinds of things. So we, we want to kind of kickstart that here. Um, <clears throat> the Fedora Docker layered image build service, and uh, I'm probably just going to call it the image build service. Uh, it's not the most inventive of names, but it's descriptive. So excuse me, drinking coffee. Um, it, it's a build system that will automatically rebuild layered images. And what's important about that is, um, actually, let me first define what a layered image is. So in Docker space, there are two kinds of images. There's a base image and there's a layered image. And the base image is uh, created from kind of a special directive called from scratch. Uh, and you simply build the base image effectively in a true root and provide a root file system to Docker such that uh, it can then use that as the basis for other containers. So it needs to be self-contained runtime and those kinds of things. And then if you in Fedora space wanted to create something on top of that and provide a service, uh, for example, uh, a database or a web server, your first directive in your Docker file would be from Fedora and the Fedora base image would then be used. Well, these layered images need to be maintained in some way. And that's what this build system and as well as the pipeline in general, like there's a lot of components and I'll show that in a moment, how they all tie together and everything that's going on. This automatic rebuild is if something in the base layer changes so let's say there's a glibc update or some security vulnerability somewhere in the stack of dependencies that one of the layered images uh, relies upon. Uh, first, that will get updated. The, the update will go to the, um, the layer that is depended upon, and then all dependent layers uh, will be rebuilt automatically by the system such that the next time somebody on the Fedora community were to do a Docker pull on the image that they were using, uh, they would get this new updated, uh, new updated layered image, and the the big goal behind that, and actually OpenShift. Uh, so the next thing is uh, uh, the build component is built on top of OpenShift v3, and the reason that we're we use OpenShift v3 is the concept of the uh, the image streams allowed for creating uh, this dependency graph, as well as uh, the relationship to define uh, when things need to be rebuilded. Um, beyond that, you know, OpenShift in general uh, with, with the custom build types allow us to have a lot of flexibility in what we can actually do. And uh, we created it on top of OpenShift v3 and then tied it into all of Fedora infra infrastructure, again, uh, going back to maintaining the consistency. So <clears throat> this is the architecture, and I know it's, it's kind of a, a, a lot going on, and I will try my best to distill it down to uh, something that's consumable. 
So <clears throat> on the far right, um, there is a box that says Fedora layer to image maintainers. So in the world of Fedora right now, there are Fedora RPM maintainers and uh, often called package maintainers. Uh, in the future, there's gonna be different kinds of maintainers for different kinds of artifacts, uh, RPMs being one of them. Uh, now with layered images, we will have layered image maintainers. And these will be the people that will maintain things like the Docker file, um, the, apt, uh, the application in initialization scripts, uh, any kinds of documentation, as well as tests that are needed. The, if you follow the arrow, um, you'll see that the, the things that I just mentioned are listed there and inside of a, an outer box called distgit. <clears throat> and distgit is a git-based system that has certain branching conventions that are enforced uh, such that each branch is correlated to a release of the distribution. So you will see uh, in the demo when I when I kind of work through this, you'll see there's an F24 branch, which will specify Fedora 24. And we can this way gate different versions and different modifications for new features or new enabled uh, components in newer versions, as well as uh, allow for keeping, you know, sanity between releases. <clears throat> in a traditional RPM sense, this would be where you'd have your spec file and your source uh, listings, as well as your patches. And you would commit them to Git. Uh, you can do so much like you do in your general Git, but there's also a uh, command line tool that's a helper that assists in things. So for like switch branch, you can display what branches are available to see how many versions of Fedora, the item that you're working with uh, supports. And that command line tool is called fedpkg or fedpackage. If you follow the arrow from this box that we're looking at, you can see fed package container build. And container build is the directive that tells fed package that this is a container uh, it is a layered image build, and it needs to be handled as such. <clears throat> Whereas um, if you were to be building an RPM, it would just do, uh, it would just be a fed package build. Uh, and one thing to quickly note about diskit is our Git layout. Uh, we actually had to modify the Git layout as well as um, add functionality into fed package to handle the difference between layered images and RPM files. And mostly just because in the past, there were only RPMs. The only thing you ever had to deal with was RPMs. It was the only artifact that we delivered. So we now have what's in, what we are just calling namespaces. Uh, we're namespacing disk kit such that it correlates to the artifact that we're delivering. So RPMs is now a namespace and it is the default namespace. If you don't specify, that is the default. And that is, the reason is, is for backwards compatibility. And then we've also added um, Docker. So <clears throat> um, the fed package container build command will then kick off to the next, it will kind of follow the line to the next box. And this is Koji. Koji is Fedora's build system. The build system uh, is what has been used forever to build um, RPMs, to build our live images, to build our ISO, uh, DVD installers, all of our cloud images, the QMU raw, uh, QCOW2, those kinds of things. And um, Koji depends on a lot of other technologies to kind of satisfy all these different things. It's not an all-encompassing do everything, but it's, it's the control point. It has the database backend that stores all of the information and uh, it maintains uh, metadata about the distribution such that we can produce um, like things like yum repositories directly out of the contents that have been built inside of it. So um, this is where the container build plugin is installed. And this is where we'll do, we will, instead of actually doing the builds, um, we offload it. And we then, uh, we also do our RPM builds there. Uh, I just realized that I'm, I'm missing an arrow directly from Koji down to OSBS, <clears throat> and I apologize for that. But in the bottom, <clears throat> pardon me, in the bottom you see a box called OSBS, and this is the OpenShift build system. And that is an upstream project that is actually OSB, 
it's been renamed to OSBS client, um, mostly because it's more accurately representing what's happening. OpenShift is the build system. OpenShift provides all of the primitives that are required. It requ provides the image streams. It provides the custom builder type. <clears throat> and OSBS effectively just sits in front of OpenShift and uses it um, in a very specified, predefined fashion uh, with a custom builder type uh, and a set of Python APIs and things like that so that we can tie it into um, other aspects of the build system, which are also written in Python. You might notice in OSBS, <clears throat> pardon me, an item called Atomic Reactor. Atomic Reactor is what we actually use to do the Docker image builds, and uh, it's a standalone utility that actually gets run inside of OpenShift v3 as part of the um, uh, as part of the custom builder type, and we use that uh, mostly because it affords us certain um, luxuries of being able to programmatically uh, or from the command line pass overrides for, you know, injecting certain YUM repositories or changing aspects of the Docker file um, purely for the build. And, and this is good because in our environment, we want to isolate what the build root, what we're effectively calling the build root, which is basically just a Docker container um, that is used for the purpose of building uh, other Docker containers. And the build root needs to be isolated from things like the internet. So we have to be able to specify specifically what content sources it can access. Um, and, and the main reason for this is, let's say that somebody wanted to put in their Docker file a, a curl pipe to grep from somewhere in the internet that does an install of some software. Um, now, this might not be malicious in nature, uh, but it does remove the ability to audit or reproduce because that thing on the internet could disappear or what results from that thing in the internet will change. Um, or it could be malicious in intent and people are injecting, um, you know, somebody, somebody has decided to inject uh, some, uh, I don't know, some bad payload into the image that would then cause our, our, uh, our users' issues. <clears throat> so from there, um, OSBS interacts with our registry. And for those who've used Docker, uh, this should be very commonplace in terms of something you interact with. Most people interact directly with the Docker Hub, which is probably the largest and most popular Docker registry uh, in the world. <clears throat> but what we are going to do is have a Fedora hosted registry, and there's actually going to be a couple of them. Um, there will be the intermediate build registry, and then there will be the production registry. And the intermediate build, reg build registry uh, is where all the builds will land. So if somebody wanted to pull a build uh, that has just been created so that they can test some feature, um, they are absolutely able to do that. Uh, as soon as the build lands, they can pull that down and run their tests on it. This also allows for um, our automated uh, CI to uh, do the same thing, to pull that uh, image as soon as it was created and, and, uh, and perform tests on it. Um, and then the production, uh, what we're planning to do in the Fedora 25 cycle is to actually have every two weeks do production releases of uh, all currently available layered image builds. And that will be based on um, automated testing. So for all of the images that have passed the automated testing, they will get a release. They will have a new update pushed to that production registry. And uh, people can pull that from registry.fedoraproject.org. Um, <clears throat> which doesn't exist today. Uh, that is that is in the works. We will have it um, in the coming months. But if you uh, write this second, try to pull from there, you won't get it. But um, in the future, we actually want to allow for automated gated tests so that we can iterate even more rapidly and allow for um, uh, Fedora layered image maintainers to actually opt into something like a continuous delivery. Uh, mechanism. So um, we have we have plans to make components of Fedora become more rapidly deployable and more rapidly iterated upon, and not necessarily have to exist in the same six-month life cycle as the rest of uh, the operating system. 
and um, some of that actually rounds out to a whole different, uh, deeper conversation about a, a Fedora initiative called Modularity, um, which I will make sure to provide a link to at the end of the slide for anybody interested. <clears throat> so um, another thing to note is when we push to registry.fedoraproject.org for the production registry, we will also be mirroring that content up to the Docker Hub um, so that people um, who are just used to using the hub or um, maybe aren't using Fedora directly and don't know about specifically uh, our registry and those kinds of things, and they found Fedora through doing a search on the hub, we wanna make sure that they're also getting uh, the latest content. Um, and that, in a very, very large nutshell, is the layered image build service. So demo time, I want to go through a really quick demo, and let's see, the package stage. There's a project called Cockpit, and um, actually, just really quick, let's go to. So, for those not familiar, Cockpit is a web interface uh, admin portal for uh, Linux servers and it can do multi-node, multi-host, it can manage clusters, it can do Kubernetes, it can manage Docker, all kinds of really interesting things. And when, uh, what's interesting about it uh, beyond that is that it by default can run out of a Docker uh, image itself. So this will be something that we are going to uh, deliver as a layered image uh, build initially. So, uh, what we showed earlier was that we have this thing called disk git, and this is what I'm looking at here. This is actually a git repository that has, um, uh, so let's do a fed package switch branch. We have different branches, so um, we have Fedora 24 and master. And master is rawhide, uh, Fedora 24 is branched, and uh, it actually looks like Somebody. So something else to note is I'm actually working in stage. This is not in production yet. So Fedora infrastructure has a staging environment and a production environment. We kind of fiddle and experiment in stage. Uh, it looks like Sony's messing with the concept of uh, a vast future where Fedora 26 exists already. Um, but anyways, let's do something else. So, so what I would do as a maintainer of a Docker file or a Docker layer image is do certain things in uh, the Docker file. So let's just bump the release uh, by a small increment. And then I can actually do a fed package commit with a message, bump release for demo. And then we can do a fed package push. And this is going to push out to, again, Git. So the output here should look very familiar for those who are familiar with Git. We will then do a, oh, actually I need to. I'm to point it at stage, so make sure we're not. Okay, so we'll do. Ah, very short hand. So we'll do a fed package container build, and this is gonna go off, and uh, like we saw in the diagram before, this will send a message out to Koji and schedule a build that will then happen out in the environment. Now this is gonna take a few minutes, so instead of staring at this output, I've actually pulled up a old build that already was done um, for Cockpit, and it was successful. So what we can see here is that we have our git uh, SCM URL, as well as the exact uh, checks on the, the actual commit message that we're trying to pull. So this will specify the exact commit that we sent as the build, um, which provides our, our input into the build system. And then this is a parent task. <clears throat> and this parent task will handle multiple architectures. Uh, right now we only have x86-64 enabled, but as Docker, uh, as Docker gets more widespread support for other architectures, we will see this actually pick up um, other things um, like ARM, ARM64, PowerPC, those kinds of things. So we can then look at the subtask, which is actually the build. If I 
if it will load. Okay, here we go. And uh, in here we can see a handful of things, uh, including the result, the build log, oh, So uh, if we wanted to look at, these are all of our logs. I mean, it's it's very verbose. There's a lot going on. Um, but if something were to go wrong, that's a place to look. One thing to note is our registry. So here we have uh, three different listings for the registry. Um, one of them is a uh, build UUID based on uh, date and timestamp. Uh, another one is based on version release tag. So it's actually tagged in the registry. And then another one is just release, no, I'm sorry, just version, and then latest. And that will be pushed to, to latest. So we can actually um, go over here and do a Docker pull on that image, and it will pull it down. Uh, I've already downloaded it. It's pre it's pre cached on my machine just for the sake of, of having it. But what's interesting about that is the atomic command, and this might get off in the weeds, but for anybody, atomic is a uh, command wrapper for uh, many things Docker, and it correlates to Project Atomic, but we can atomic run uh, that command. Oh. Atomic run that command, and now, Nope. Okay, well, something went wrong because of live demos. But the end goal is to allow for people to directly pull from this registry and and run it and uh, consume it that way. Uh, in for Fedora contributors to be able to contribute much in the same way that they do for RPMs. And one thing I can show really quick. If I were to, I don't know, go into for RPM, uh, just because why not make it full circle? Um, I could do a fed package, and I'll do a scratch build, which is an unofficial build. But this will, again, uh, this is actually an RPM build. And as we can see, the output here is very similar to what we saw um, with the container build. and. The command was very similar, and it's just the same workflow. Um, and here, again, we have this Koji task that has been created. Um, and we can actually exit that, so we don't have to stare at it. But um, we'll see here that this is all of the uh, you know Docker spec file, because it's an RPM, um, the service unit file for systemd, and those kinds of things. So the workflow is very similar, and uh, it's just meant to provide a, a really good experience for um, people in Twitter who want to contribute Docker layered images and uh, anybody who's interested, um, there are a number of links here and I will make sure to go ahead and um, add, uh, add a couple that we had discussed during, during the presentation to this page. But um, you can see the, I don't know what, the fifth one down, floorproject.org slash wiki join that provides information of how to actually join the Fedora project, how to get involved, how to contribute um, code and content. And um, anything that we're working on here directly is related to the, the cloud group, um, the change Docker layered image build, uh, layered Docker image build service. I goofed when I edited that and it just lived on. Um, our Fedora Docker registry, which is our plan to actually build scale that registry and other items in the, the area, uh, as well as the upstream projects for the technologies that we are actually using to deliver the, uh, the layered image build service. So I, at this time, am going to stop sharing my screen. Actually, can you, um, I'm going to ask you to go back um, a yep, couple yep, of yep, yep. on your screen and, and ask a question um, from a community point of view. Um, one of the things that um, I'm interested in is, is getting um, lots of the different open source projects to create containers that they can use to run on OpenShift um, and images. And the slide that you had, where you had the Fedora image maintainers, uh, whatever that tag was. Oh. Fedora layered image maintainers? 
in, in the Jimmy Tanners. Ex explain to me a little bit more about that role. So, for example, if I'm someone like um, the open source project lead for MariaDB, or in the example you used was Cockpit, um, who, in from Fedora um, perspective, who do you expect to maintain that image um, when the next release is out? Do you expect someone from the Cockpit project or MariaDB to have someone assigned to be a Fedora layered image maintainer? And be part of the Fedora community, or how is how are you envisioning um, people using this? So this is kind of twofold. Um, it can go either direction. Somebody from an upstream community. So for example, um, the cockpit team upstream does actually have um, somebody designated to doing their cockpit RPM builds, and then they will again later uh, for their their layered image build containers. Uh, however, they completely automated that. The the person uh, that actually manages that these days is a boss that they wrote. Um, uh, but on the flip side, most of the RPM content that goes into Fedora today is actually maintained by specific Fedora RPM maintainers. And they are generally people who are users of a technology and maybe are involved with upstream in some form or fashion. Um, and they will kind of take on that responsibility. And by and large, I would say 90, probably 90% of those people uh, are just volunteers. It's things that they, it's something they do in their free time because they are passionate about that particular piece of software and uh, they are fans of what we do in Fedora and are contributors to Fedora and help make the distro as well as you know all the things in the repositories. Um, so it could go either way. If somebody, if somebody in the upstream community would like to designate somebody uh, because it's, it's something that they would like to engage with the Fedora project on and actually have their content um, in the Fedora registry in the Fedora build pipeline uh, as an official, you know, participation from the upstream project, that would be great. Uh, but it's not a requirement. I mean, we also we have a wish list. We actually have a package wish list, wish list and we will establish a very similar thing for uh, layered images. Um, of just things that people want to see, and those could even be done by uh, the uh, the upstream teams that want to see it offered and, and just add their name to the list, and, and people who are interested in that technology will generally pick it up and, and add it to the distribution. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could very easily go either way. In terms of, um, it's really quick actually, let me go over here. So, for those not familiar, there is a uh, website called releasemonitoring.org, and this is using a tool called Ametia, uh, and this was written as developed and maintained by people in the Fedora community, but it's not specific to uh, Fedora. Um, you can add projects here to have their upstream releases monitors, monitored, and in the event that they produce a new release, uh, things happen in the Fedora environment, including um, things said over the uh, Fed message, which is our federated, federated message bus. So when software upstream is updated, uh, people who are involved in the Fedora project uh, in correlation with that software get notified about it. Um, so it's not uh, it's not like a direct direct manual process such that somebody in the community needs to constantly be monitoring that upstream software for uh, for a release. Um, they can elect to get notifications about it. Uh, currently, if you can see on the screen here, uh, we're monitoring of you know just over ten and a half thousand uh, upstream projects at the moment. And uh, it should be noted that anybody can uh, create an account, and log in, and, and add things to this. But um, so let's you know, for example, so MariaDB. Uh, since we're since we were talking about MariaDB, we'll just we'll go ahead and, and do that one. So MariaDB is actually uh, already monitored, um, and its latest versions are reported upon. And uh, we can actually see, let's see, oh, this is just information about that message. So, um, uh, since we're, let's see, so we're going down the rabbit hole, I, I want to show something else really quick. Um, That's right. It's an interesting rabbit hole. So, um, I'm yeah, happy so, uh, Aside from um, FedMethods, there's also a tool called DataGrepper, and DataGrepper 
grabs every single fed message that goes across the message bus, message bus and it keeps it persistently. And you can monitor the feed and you can query it. Um, uh, to date, apparently, uh, you know, 60.5 million messages have been received and stored in this uh, in this service. And we can actually just monitor the feed. And if you just kind of want to see all the things going on the door, you, they'll they'll kind of fly by, or you can limit your uh, search down. And um, there's discussions of of how you can do that. But if you wanted to uh, perform searches against Data Grepper uh, for messages emitted by release monitoring to kind of query what the latest you know version of things are in a programmatic way, um, we could actually automate the incrementing of a, of a version and, and uh, incrementing uh, the build of that, which we have. Um, so there's a tool called Cochet, um, which actually keys builds off of release monitoring um, and then will just attempt to increment and do a build. And if it passes, it will alert the maintainer that there is a passing build. And these are the modifications that were made to create that build. And, um, and then uh, maintainers just need to basically simply, you know, do a, a, a sanitization check, make sure that, you know, what was done in the automated fashion uh, didn't cause any issues and then uh, actually submit it as an official update. Um, and what I would like to do is something very similar to this, but for Docker layered image builds, so that um, if a maintainer wanted to uh, participate but didn't want to have a large time commitment um, in, you know, in the normal cycle, obviously sometimes things will happen to the major upstream releases that will have non-compatible changes, and uh, it will require a little bit more, uh, you know, tender level yeah. care to do the upgrade, but. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we are we are doing everything that we can to make the entire release process, the entire build process, uh, as automated as possible, with uh, with various you know gating, automated tests, and sanity checking by a human hands on when needed. So there's there's one other question in the chat, and it's Jorge asking it, um, and I think you're kind of answering it in in a, in a way. And is are the Docker image updates timeline aligned with Fedora releases and updates. So what I take from all this automation you have is that when the base Fedora image changes, um, that's going to trigger a lot of image rebuilding as well. Yes. Yeah, so um, there, there's a little bit of a long-winded answer to that, but uh, the, the base takeaway from that is yes, we plan for it to follow uh, normal updates. So for those who are not familiar, we have a system called Bodhi, and Bodhi is the Fedora update system. <clears throat> this currently today only handles RPMs. We are going to add the functionality for this to also handle Docker images. And in the initial offering, Docker images that come out of Fedora will only be comprised of Docker, uh, Fedora RPMs. Uh, in the future, we want to kind of loosen that constraint and allow for um, uh, all kinds of things to be put into Docker, not just uh, RPMs. But um, in the initial, it will be just Fedora RPMs. So um, there will be, uh, the plan is that there will actually be a relationship uh, between a Docker, image, a Docker image and the RPMs that are, um, that it is comprised of. And when an update uh, for RPMs that are in the list that a layered image is comprised of uh, gets updated, uh, that should trigger a series of events. And one of those events will be a new rebuild. Then um, there will be an automatic entry in Bodhi, and uh, Bodhi will then trigger uh, what's called Taskatron. Taskatron. I love the names that you guys add to these things. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, Taskatron is our um, task execution framework. And what I mean by that is it literally can execute anything. Um, one of the things that it does is uh, automated tests. So, you know, much in the, the way of uh, CI, it's built on top of BuildBot, it has all kinds of uh, fancy 
I don't know, we can do what, a grid, B grid. Yeah, anyways. Um, there, it, there's a lot of things it can do. So what we will do is <clears throat> Bodhi will set up this thing. Um, there will be a message sent across the Fed, uh, the Fed message bus, and Taskatron will pick that up and say, hey, I need to run tests. It will run tests, and then it will submit back to uh, the uh, update entry, pass or fail, and if it passes, then there will be a new Docker image release. Yeah. And that will be tied to the RPM, the Fedora RPM content. And that is the long-term goal. Now, the amount of development effort that was required for that is not small. So in the short term, uh, in the Fedora 25 timeframe, what we are going to do, and note that like Fedora 24 comes out in a week or two, depending uh, on uh, blocker bugs, uh, so Fedora 25 is, you know, the next six months uh, time frame in terms of development effort. So in that time, we are just, we are going to set up an automated system that will key off of Fed messages and those kinds of things to kick off automated tests and, and much of the groundwork for this, but the release schedule is just going to be a static two weeks. So every two weeks, there will be a new cut of all of the images. Uh, with the caveat of that being anything security related. So if there's a, a critical security thing, if, you know, I don't know, pick, pick the latest CVE that has its own website logo and t-shirt um, and music video. Uh, and, and if the next one of those happens, we will absolutely address that immediately and we will push out updates. Um, but in terms of just standard, you know, bug fixes, new versions, feature releases, those kinds of things, it's just going to be a standard two weeks uh, until we have all of the uh, the work done into the update system to handle this. So it sounds like to me that once again, Fedora is going to have all of the, the bleeding edge latest um, Docker images for the ones that are on your wish list and the ones that people are willing to maintain um, and will be, become the sort of go-to place to get those latest images um, based on all the automation that you have, as opposed to having to wait until a project like, you know, not, I'm not picking on MariaDB um, or someone else um, gets their images built and put them up on Docker Hub that, that, you know, once this is all in place um, and all the automation is working, Fedora should become, you know, the Fedora registry for images could become the, the go-to place to get the latest and greatest of everything. Is that a, a safe thing to sort of predict? Um, we would like that to happen. I, I, you know, who, who knows what will happen in, in the grander scheme of, of the world and, and what the community is going to want from, from whom. But uh, no, we would love for that to happen. And, and basically what we're trying to do is deliver uh, the best that we possibly can um, with the latest you know, cutting edge or um, leading edge technology that we, that we can. And um, just kind of to round back to the OpenShift point, another thing that we want to do in the Fedora cloud space is actually um, work on a set of guidelines that can allow for um, applications that go through our build pipeline to be automatically imported and ran in OpenShift. Um, and that is kind of another stretch goal that we have, and that's more focused directly on the Fedora working group as opposed to the release engineering. A lot of what I focus on is, is kind of the release engineering backend work because uh, that's what I'm involved in in my day-to-day, -day, and that's kind of what, um, I guess, always comes to mind first when I start discussing these things. But in the Fedora working group, that is something that we want to do. And uh, under the umbrella of the upcoming Fedora initiative, um, or I'm sorry, the Fedora incubator uh, project, we have um, a new... Uh, goal of actually kind of targeting um, OpenShift as our as our container uh, runtime platform uh, for things that the Fedora Working Group, uh, the Fedora Cloud Working Group, will kind of focus on around um, multi multi container services and scaled out deployments and those kinds of things. And uh, so we do, we we actually have plans to um, kind of. Uh, start a more formal relationship with the upstream of OpenShift Origin and, and try to uh, provide uh, something that's useful to people who want to use OpenShift as well as um, Fedora as a platform for people who want to run OpenShift. Um, well, and, and again, in, in kind of the leading edge, we, we are going to ship upstream latest release as quick as we sanely can. So, sounds like a, a huge 
huge gain uh, for the OpenShift community, um, and I'm hoping that we can get some of the folks um, interested in working with you, and so that you're not um, resource constrained, as I as I know you guys always are. Um, right. And well, and actually, just just a quick note. Last week we had the Fedora Cloud Working Group uh, activity days, uh, in and we had a you know a little over a dozen of us uh, meet and. Um, and just kind of do sprints and work on things and have hack fests. And uh, during one of those times, we were actually uh, fortunate enough to grab a few people from the OpenShift Upstream Development uh, community and kind of propose uh, what we want to do and uh, and see if there was anything from that that would be useful. So one of the things that we want to target actually is doing a full containerized deployment of OpenShift Origin on top of Fedora Atomic Coast, um, which is a whole different rabbit hole uh, to go down. but. If anybody is familiar with uh, Fedora Atomic Host, um, that is uh, that is a target for for what the Fedora Cloud Working Group wants to um, ship as the primary deliverable in the future. Uh, as uh, we kind of believe that that kind of thing, the more the more immutable infrastructure style of uh, of deployments in in the cloud space is kind of the future. So we are yeah. we are actively working towards all the things as fast as we possibly can. Yeah. So I know Matthew's on on the on the call as well, and he's been terrifically silent. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to shout out there, Matthew, um, to get people more involved in in Fedora? Um, yeah, I've been silent because Adam's been doing a terrific job and pretty much has said everything I'd like to say. So I didn't have much to add. Um, I guess one of the things, uh, as a follow up to that cloud fad. Uh, meeting, I actually just posted something to the Fedora Cloud mailing list, which you can get to, I think, from that second wiki link there, seeing on the screen. Um, and I just posted something about the future um, of Fedora and Fedora Cloud and OpenShift and where we're going to go with that. So that would be a great place for interested people to jump in. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll see if we can gather some forces behind it. It sounds um, to me like it's going to be one of the, the, the go to places. Um, for getting images as well in, in the not too distant future. So um, thank you very much for all the work that you've been doing. Uh, it's hugely appreciated. And um, I'm glad to hear some of the OpenShift Origin engineers jumped on that um, working hack hackathon day to help you out. Um, we need to get more of that going, I know. So um, thanks again. And I'm not seeing any other questions. So I'm going to Say thank you 